Hello everyone and welcome. We are sitting inside of the Volkswagen ID4 and I'll tell you something, I like electric cars. I really like the Volkswagen Eagle, so I was excited to try out this Volkswagen ID4. 250 miles of range, rear wheel drive, 200 horsepower, sounds like a good thing to me. And so my plan with this video was to show that you don't have to have a Tesla to go on a road trip and drive across America. Uh, you know, it, it is no longer the case that only Teslas can do it. That was my plan for the video. Uh, but I was a bit disappointed with what I found out once I started actually trying this thing out for long range driving. And so that's what we're gonna get into in this video and some of the problems that I see with this car. And many of them I think can be fixed with updates. So, you know, the, the potential outlook is good. Uh, I just don't think it's quite ready yet. So let me give you a little background on driving across America in an electric car. Now you can do it in a vehicle that isn't a Tesla because there is a network called Electrify America. So there was a little bit of a scandal with some diesel emissions that involved a company called Volkswagen. You may have heard about this and part of their agreement with the US is that they would invest two billion dollars in electric vehicle infrastructure and education programs uh, because of this diesel emission scandal. And so Volkswagen created Electrify America, which is a fantastic fast charging uh, electric network of chargers across the US so you can get from pretty much any point to any other point. Now there's a couple states that don't yet have access, uh, but most states are covered. Tesla's is currently a bit better coverage, um, but you know, this thing's expanding and it's getting pretty good and you can actually drive across the country uh, in a non-Tesla vehicle, which is exciting, right? I am a strong believer in that if you're going to convince people to try something different, like an electric car, it needs to be better. There have to be advantages. There's, there's gotta be reasons to move forward uh, and choose this newer technology uh, that are advantages over what you're currently using. So I believe it needs to be better. And also it's a good idea from a design standpoint to have as few opportunities as possible for people to make mistakes. So let's talk about charging. When you pull up to one of these Electrify America networks, um, you know, if you're in a Tesla and you pull up to a Tesla supercharger, you plug in your car and it starts charging. You press a button on the charger, it opens your charge port, you plug it in, it starts charging your car. There's not many steps there. Uh, and because there's not many steps and because the steps are simple, there's not a lot of opportunity for mistakes. Now, here's what happened when I go to an Electrify America network in this Volkswagen. And keep in mind, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, you can pull up to this Electrify America network, plug in and it'll start charging. Once again, just as simple as using a Tesla, very easy process, you just plug it in and it starts charging. Well, what happens when you take a Volkswagen ID4 and plug it into the network that they created? Now, yes, Electrify America is for all electric vehicles. Even Teslas could use it if you use an adapter. Any electric vehicle can use this network, uh, but it was created by Volkswagen. It was funded by Volkswagen. You would think pulling up in a Volkswagen and starting to charge, it would be a very simple process, right? So you pull up, you plug in the charger, then you open the app on your phone, you go to Electrify America, you find your charger on the map, so you select your charging location. Once you've selected your charging location, you select your individual charger. Now there can be multiple cords on each charger, so in this one there was two cords on each charger. You have to select your individual cord, and then from that you swipe across to say initiate, start charging my vehicle. So you can see that there's more steps there. Is it impossible? No. Can anyone do it? Sure. But is it complicated? Is it unnecessarily complicated? Yes. And that's the thing. If you're going to convince people that electric cars are a good thing and the future and something that you should try out, you shouldn't make this very cumbersome, tedious process for you to start charging when you're on a road trip. Now, if you never use this vehicle on a road trip and you always do all your charging at home, I think it's a pretty solid car. Uh, still some things I'm not stoked on, but I think it's a pretty solid car. But once you get into these charging networks, you start to see these flaws. And to me, it is absolutely mind blowing that Volkswagen created this charging network and a Ford Mustang Mach-E works better on it than their own car. That's crazy. So I imagine in the future, hopefully very soon, they're going to update that process. So these Volkswagens are just plug and charge and there's no tedious nonsense behind the scenes. But for the early adopters, you know, if you're, it's your first time getting an electric car, what's your experience gonna be like? That plays a big role. 
and mine was not good. So I pull up to the charger, first time ever using an Electrify America charger. The thing says, hey, plug it in first. So that's what I did, I plugged it in first. Well, an error happened and it said, unplug and replug in the connector. So I try to unplug it and it won't let me. It won't let me pull it out. So I'm wondering, you know, what's the deal? I go in the car, I look in, I don't see any way of unlocking that charging port. No idea how to unlock this thing. Well, it turns out you have to hit the unlock button on the key fob, even though the car was already unlocked, to pull out the charger and then reinsert it. And then I went through the process of the app and then I was able to start charging. But again, you know, it's, it's not a big deal if it happens like one time. Um, but if it's that first time you're trying it out, it's really gonna turn some people off to this experience uh, because it's so tedious and it doesn't need to be. Tesla has been doing this since basically 2012. They've had a better solution, very simple solution. You plug it in, it starts charging. Ford's doing it on this network right now uh, and yet this vehicle can't do it. So that's frustrating. The second time I went to the charger, Again, there's two charging cables on each charger. I selected the wrong one, so it gave me an error message on my phone, had to select the correct one. So small little things where it's just allowing for opportunities for you to make mistakes when it doesn't need to. There doesn't need to be that opportunity for you to make mistakes. It should just work especially when it's the network that Volkswagen created. Also worth mentioning, while I was there the second time charging, a Volkswagen e-Golf showed up, tried to charge their vehicle, couldn't get it to work, looked at a second charger, couldn't get that to work, and then left. So that is just not acceptable. You can't have people show up to a charger after you're on this road trip, you've got a small amount of range left, and then it doesn't work. Okay, so my first problem is no plug in charge. The second thing, of course, if you're on an electric road trip, you're going to need to stop at chargers. So let me show you how the navigation system here works. And we're just gonna say that we're going to drive to Los Angeles. So we say, great, we like this route. Please drive to the route shown. Your route has multiple necessary charging stops. Okay, and it says we have charging stops, right? Which makes sense. Very nice that it puts in the charging stops for you, so you don't have to really think about, hey, where do I need to stop? Well, hold on just a second. So let's click and see what chargers it shows. So look at this. Our first stop, it has us stopping at a 7.2 kilowatt charger. Now this vehicle is capable of 125 kilowatts, and the Electrify America network, Volkswagen's created network, is 150 kilowatts up to 350 in some locations. And yet it doesn't give us any Electrify America choices as our first stops. And the first one, it's telling us to charge for 10 hours. The second one, an hour and 30 minutes because it's only a 50 kilowatt charger. The third one, another hour and 30 minutes stop. So it doesn't intelligently choose which chargers to use. And if you wait long enough, it'll actually start updating this. But for me, it updated twice uh, and it got better each time. But the second time it was still showing a 30 kilowatt and a 50 kilowatt. And it never showed me Electrify America. And the unfortunate thing is the Electrify America network does exist on that path. So I can look right here on my phone and see that that path is covered by Electrify America. And these are faster chargers and yet the navigation on the system doesn't automatically route you to Volkswagen's created network. Now, yes, this probably will be updated in the future, and I hope it is, but it's very frustrating because if you were to get in this car and say, okay, I'm just gonna let it tell me what to do, and then you show up to a 7.2 kilowatt charger that tells you to wait for 10 hours, you're gonna lose your mind. Now, are there third-party apps that can help you do this and guide you to the wrecked charging locations? Yes. Absolutely, I still think it should be built in within the functionality of the vehicle to use its own created network. Another thing I wish this had was one pedal driving. So you can select between a normal drive mode and a regen brake mode, where in the normal drive mode, if you let off the gas pedal, it just coasts. And then in B mode, uh, it will actually have regen when you let off the throttle pedal or the accelerator pedal. Uh, it has a little play button on it, pause button on the brake pedal. I think that's a nice touch. Uh, but they don't have one pedal driving. And this isn't something you know that's rare in the electric car world. The Ford Mustang Mach-E has it, Nissan Leaf has it, Chevy Bolt has it, which works really well in the Chevy Bolt. Uh, Tesla has it. One pedal driving is a very natural thing for electric cars. Inching forward when you're not on the throttle or on the accelerator pedal, I'm gonna keep calling it throttle regardless. When you're not on that accelerator pedal, accelerating forward, slightly creeping forward, that's what torque converters do. But 
Clutch-based CVTs don't do that. Dual-clutch transmissions don't do that. Manual transmissions don't do that. Electric cars don't do that. So I don't know why we force this unnatural habit and we don't at least allow for the option of one pedal driving. I think if the option is there for it to creep forward, great. People, if they're used to that, can use that. But for those that don't want this unnatural thing to occur, uh, allow for the option of one pedal driving to be there. There's also a few interesting things with the controls. So you have this, you know, steering column mounted uh, drive gear selector, so drive, neutral, reverse, park, uh, on this little hidden shifter that rotates, this knob that rotates behind the steering wheel. The instructions for it you can't see because they're hidden behind the steering wheel. Um, the touch controls on the steering wheel, they have this like haptic feedback, uh, but you know, for cruise control or for volume adjustment, it's a bit slow and it's a bit kind of clunky. There is a nice volume slider below the infotainment system here which works nicely uh, but the steering wheel control ones are a little weird also for cruise control it's like a light touch will give you plus or minus one mile per hour and a harder touch will give you plus or minus five miles per hour but getting that touch just right is a little finicky the rear windows use the same controls as the front windows for going up and down you just select whether or not you want the front or the rear windows uh, for those controls and the thing is the button works just fine if you press and hold but if you do a light tap a quick tap even a hard tap uh, it doesn't actually activate it so it's a bit finicky of a little button there and it's like why not just give me all four window controls in one spot instead of having this weird switch that is a little finicky it requires a press and hold in order to switch between the two and you can't put all of them down and up simultaneously another thing I wish they offered as you can see this is a nice shade of blue but this is not the base model and the base model does not not offer blue as a color and in fact the only colors you can get with a base model are gray silver white and black and so it's a complete grayscale base model which is a bit of a bummer i feel like why not you know allow for the one person who wants it out there to have some color in their life allow them to choose a fun color but you get grayscale if you go with the base option and if you go with the upgraded option uh, you can get blue the one the one actual color choice you can get there uh, being blue so it's not all bad news the charging speed is actually pretty decent it is limited to 125 kilowatts uh, however i showed up to a charger at 10% battery and it's able to go from 10% to 80% uh, in my case it did it in 35 minutes Volkswagen says it'll go from 5% to 80% in 38 minutes these are very similar speeds to a Tesla Model 3 very similar to my car um, I've measured my car going from 15% to 65% so 50% increase in charge in 21 minutes this vehicle did that exact same thing despite its lower charging speed of 125 uh, I did it in just 22 minutes so real world charging speed actually pretty decent on this fairly similar to Tesla just slightly slower from a driving standpoint it feels pretty normal pretty normal EV it doesn't have the punchiness of some electric cars um, it doesn't have that immediate response even though it's in sport mode right now it's a pretty quick response um, but there is a slight little you know ease into that throttle uh, it is rear-wheel drive which is interesting and you know 200 horsepower but this thing weighs over 4,600 pounds. So despite, you know, a decent amount of power, it's not all that quick. And it's not that this is something that needs to be all that quick, but because it weighs so much, steel body, 4,600 pounds, uh, you know, the, the acceleration isn't quite what a lot of its competitive price range electric cars offer. One thing I do think they have done a really nice job with is the blending of the brake pedals. So as it goes from regen initially to the mechanical brakes, if you get on the brake really hard, uh, you know, you don't notice that transition. So they've done a nice job blending that regen with the actual mechanical brakes. Another interesting benefit of this being rear wheel drive is that that frees up that turning for those front wheels. So you don't have those drive axles limiting your wheel rotations. This actually has a really nice turning radius. Um, it's very surprising when you use it less than 34 feet uh, for its total turning diameter. Another interesting thing just on that choice of rear wheel drive, you know, having it be rear wheel drive means the regen is only occurring, of course, on that rear axle. And so whether it's snow or, you know, inclement weather, uh, you could have that rear end kind of want to step out because that's where the regen is occurring. And so, of course, they've got good stability control. They can correct that. Um, but it's an interesting choice for this to be an everyday, you know, kind of model driver. Uh, a lot of Volkswagens being front wheel drive and this one coming standard rear wheel drive. And then if you do live in areas they get all kinds of snow and that sort of thing, they are going to offer an all wheel drive version of this. 
Also a nice perk is that they offer you three years of free charging on the Electrify America network. So three years of free charging, fantastic. And Electrify America is actually slightly more expensive uh, than Tesla supercharger network. So it can be as a guest, 43 cents per kilowatt hour, which is fairly steep. There's definitely examples of gas cars that could be cheaper than that. And then if you're a member, it's down to 31 cents uh, per kilowatt hour, plus a $4 monthly fee. And if you charge at least once a month, you'll make up uh, you know, that $4 monthly fee. So to summarize, I think there is certainly potential here and future updates can fix several issues, but here's where we currently sit. The good news is it's smooth, quiet, and has quick torque delivery, all thanks to being an electric car. The charging speed in real world testing is very close to the Tesla Model 3. Cargo capacity is solid with a tailgate that isn't overly aerodynamic and thus provides a more boxy space. The car also has a fantastic turning radius, partly thanks to being rear-wheel drive, and overall the interior is spacious and offers nice storage features. Unfortunately, there's a healthy number of drawbacks as well. Currently, there's no plug-in charge, and the navigation won't automatically seek out Electrify America chargers. Volkswagen says they will provide an update to fix this later in 2021, but for about the first six months the car is sold, it will be behind on the functionality even the Mach-E offers on the same charging network. The ID4 is also quite heavy, as tested weighing in at 4,665 pounds, even though it's rear-wheel drive only. This is about 200 pounds heavier than the Tesla Model Y, yet the Model Y has all-wheel drive, more range, and is significantly more powerful. The weight is apparent in the driving dynamics, which are fine for a crossover, but there is a bit of side-to-side -side oscillation with quick steering inputs. There's no heat pump. There's also no front trunk, like the Mach-E and Model Y offer. There's no one-pedal driving. And finally, we get to the price, which, with incentives, is fairly decent in the range of $33,000. But with the all-wheel drive ID4 variant starting in the mid $45,000 price range, you fall into Mach-E and Model Y territory, which again offer numerous advantages. So I'm happy to see additional competition in this space, and I've enjoyed testing out Volkswagen's latest electric car, but for now it seems to fall a little short. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.